everyone and welcome to another Poppy Playtime Theory video. And today we are talking about something that's going to be on everyone's mind going into Chapter 3. And that, of course, is what is going on with Kissy Missy. As more than likely, you've seen the Mob Entertainment recent video release. Well, the recent Chapter 3 teaser known as Restricted Relocation 08-08-1995 MP4. We know this is chapter 3 related due to the hints throughout the video and not to mention the video tags. It is tagged as chapter 3. Suspiciously, it's also tagged as Huggy Wuggy, even though we didn't actually see him in this video. But I don't think this is a coincidence and I will explain a little bit later why. And it is important because this data has to be inputted by someone at Mob Entertainment. But again, that's another topic for another theory, blah, blah, blah. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you that this video is going to contain spoilers across the Poppy Playtime IP. So, of course, that means anything from Project Playtime to Poppy Playtime in all chapters. So, this, of course, is your warning. And, of course, if you do enjoy Poppy Playtime content, then hit that subscribe button as I do cover Poppy Playtime content quite frequently in between my Little Nightmares videos and everything else on the channel. But anyway, self-promotion out of the way, shamelessly done, I want to talk about the future of Kissy Missy and quite possibly her past. The main thing I want to talk about is why did Kissy Missy not attack us in Chapter 2? Now I know we've covered this briefly beforehand, but now we're not relying so much on speculation, but hard evidence. Because of course in Chapter 2, she looked a lot more friendlier than in this restricted video. So what's the deal? It's an interesting take because chapter three, of course, is going to be a lot darker as they initially said. And we've already seen it kind of get a little bit worse, but now we're getting to the real gritty stuff. And unintentionally, mob games have give us even more information to run with. And a lot of people have missed this. So I think showing us that Kissy Missy can and will attack when called on is a big play because this means a few things. One of which is that you, the player, must have much more importance than we originally thought going into the game. Not only does she spare your life in Chapter 2, she assists you by opening the door. But why? Well, I have a few ideas now. But before I talk about them, I want to highlight something a bit more that, again, that we've all ignored and sort of overlooked, especially as creators. When in fact, it's a big chunk of information. It is key to understanding what's going on. As I was editing my reaction in first analysed video, it seemed very odd to me that they would name the toys Giants. As of course, I'm sure we've all heard the word Giant before and of course assumed, you know, big, you know, there's nothing more to it than that, right? No, wrong. The first time we hear this term is with Project Playtime in the VHS tape, where Dr. Harvey Sawyer talks about the Bigger Bodies initiative. At this point, I just thought, ha, it must be because of their size. But no, it's actually much more deeper than that. The definition for giant is an imaginary or mythical being of human form, but superhuman size. Notice the reiteration of human. And this is why I believe they've used the term giant because it does in fact back up our idea about the toys being human. Well, what's left of them, let's just say. Anyone walking into Playtime Co, workers, kids, even higher management staff aren't safe. This is why the toys need to eat and have human components inside of them. This is why Huggy bled when falling in Chapter 1. Yes, they are toys, but they need to feed the brain, the consciousness. This means they're still aware of who they are and still have bodily somewhat functions and who they were before and it explains on so many levels the behavior of most of the toys so far of course there are some instances where it's a bit questionable still but this is a very very solid foundation to build up where the story comes from we know the process, we know they transfer humans or people, volunteers or not volunteers, into these toys. But what do they transfer? Well, they must transfer 
everything every organic being inside them this is why the medical bay must be so well funded and staffed and facilitated this is why they have all these eccentric operations the poppy seed must be a key component to transferring all these organic materials and structures over to the toys and again it reiterates why they bleed it reiterates why huggy gets damaged they must as i've said before in a previous video with huggy falling off the catwalk he must have fallen, damaged his organs, damaged himself, but his mind's still intact. He's aware where he needs to go. He goes back to the water treatment facility and heals himself. Now that must be the case for nearly all the toys in this Playtime Co. factory. I could talk for hours about that in particular, but again, I think that might be better for another video. But let's continue anyway. So with that, let's talk a little bit about why Kissy Missy still didn't attack you in Chapter 2. Well, here's the big thing. I think it's because you... You, the player, you, you were the one, you were the one that helped her out of those straps on that day in 1995. You were the key part to all of the downfall inside Playtime Co. You were, like Rowan Stoll, an insider. You were being used, a tool, to help these toys break out, fix what was broken, or just get revenge at this point. You were the one to follow orders from Experiment 1006. We know this because of a few things. Mommy Longlegs confirms that he used to work at the company, but we didn't exactly know where. But now we know, thanks to the release of Project Playtime, we do know you were a member of the extraction team. You were the one talking to Experiment 1006 on the VHS tape. If you remember, after the introduction of Dr. Harvey Sawyer, we got that text and it asked, can you hear us? Can you see us? That's the toys. They're talking to us. How? We're still yet to decide. But now it's all making sense. The messages from the VHS tape asking you, the extraction employee, if you are trustworthy, if you are capable of the task. You've been helping this faction of toys or people inside these toys as they plan their escape. Remember, the hour of joy is at hand. And one already tried in 1992, Huggy wuggy and this i think explains why huggy attacks you when you enter chapter one because he got caught he got angry he cannot control his emotions they cannot speak they cannot do anything human they can only act like animals and what did he see when he saw you anger he wanted to rip you apart because you failed his mission to get out of the factory he got caught you were the worker that left the delivery door open. This is why Rich was so angry at the fact that there was no one maintaining the storage area from deliveries. Because you were up there tampering all the time and your ultimate goal was to open the door and you did. And this was enough for Experiment 1006 to trust you for the next task. That was Kissy Missy. You were one of the personnel that were there that day of the videotape. I think as well, you're the cameraman. Because we see in the video that Kissy does move her hands softly. Now, of course, you being behind the camera can see this. But being aware of who Kissy Missy really is, it doesn't alarm you. Anyone else, that might have been a problem. But you kept recording. The messages on the VHS tape for the restricted Kissy Missy video are for you. You, the extraction player. The red text is the objective text from Experiment 1006. You're the one who released the straps from her. And this is why she stares at you when her eyes change direction. She doesn't flinch. She doesn't panic. She doesn't get angry. She knows you're coming out of that cabinet on the train. She knows you're coming to let her go. It's the same look we received in chapter two. It also could explain why there are only two bodies lying on the ground at the end of the tape, because you did your job and you got to escape the facility and help cause the downfall of Playtime Co. And this is why Kissy Missy let you through in chapter two. She knows you, she knows you can be trusted because she remembers you and you are here to help once more.
One interesting side note about all of this is that they all must somehow share a collective conscience or being simultaneously informed by the same entity. And it seems as if the factory is torn between two factions, one that's made up of toys wanting to return to human form in normal and one that wants to feed and just have too far gone. Perhaps with the bigger body's initiative, something happened in the way they created the giants in the toys. Perhaps the method changed when Dr. Harvey Sawyer got involved, as he mentioned he could make them not people, mindless workers, and you didn't have to pay them a wage. Perhaps this is where the split comes from. I think this is also backed up by the text we see in the restricted video, the hour of joy is at hand. One faction wants to escape, this was the plan they all thought of collectively. Anyway, let me know what you think. I will be doing some more scripts and theories before Chapter 3 comes out anyway. And of course, when Chapter 3 does come out, we'll be doing a ton of poppy stuff. So uh, subscribe for when that comes out. Um, but with that being said, let me know if you like this video. Let me know if you think it makes sense or any ideas that you have. Any objections that you have to this evidence or this theory. And of course, have a lovely morning, day or night, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe. And I'll see you all in the next theory video.